McDysis, and this is Clock Tower, PlayStation 1. The sequel to Clock Tower SNES, also known as Clock Tower 2. Uh, in Japanese, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm playing this on the Japanese version, because one, it's faster due to load speeds and tech speeds. And as well, we have some fun features as a uh, result of this. Uh, we're going to be doing the category Jennifer 100%, which is the best ending of the game and also the fastest ending for Jennifer's side. This game has two speedruns, Jennifer and Helen. We're going to be focused on Jennifer right now, we might do Helen another time. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's get into the game, shall we? Yeah! So, I should mention, for one, uh, Clock Tower starts on a prologue with this guy named Samuel Barden. Uh, Samuel Barden is going to be uh, one of the characters of the game, and his role will vary depending on the path you take. He won't be too important, given that we're doing uh, Jennifer, but we'll have to play as him for the first ten minutes or so, and this kind of teach you about the game. And if it sounds weird, it's because fast disc speed ends up breaking the game. So keep that in mind. Uh, as well, I'll be uh, pausing the game right when we begin. This is actually slower to do so, but it'll make a fun mode and kind of what I want to do for uh, marathons and such. And that's when I have fun with it, because it's a lot more fun that way. Normally, you can see the characters here are just kind of standing. This is the guy we'll be playing as. This is Helen, who you can play as. And then this is Jennifer, who will be our main character. I think I should have done the setting right. I'm not too sure, though. I'll find out in Jennifer's scenario. If not, I can always redo this. But it should work in that sense. Uh, anyway, you may notice right now there's just a lot of dialogue mashing. This is part of the reason why I play in Japanese. We're mashing the dialogue, and it's faster to do so in Japanese because of the way it scrolls. Anyway, Buyo Buyo is a native setting, and we'll be turning that on. What it does is it makes the characters bounce. In order to escape this room, we need to talk to the scissors and the chair. So while I'm, uh, you know, talking these two things, I'll explain. Buyo Buyo is an unlockable feature exclusive on the Japanese version of this game. See? Japanese. It has to be in Japanese. Can't just be the regular version of this game. If you play in English, you don't get Buyo Buyo. You only get it if you get every single ending in the Japanese version. I don't know why it's exclusive to the Japanese version. It just sort of is. But it's a fun mode that'll make everyone bounce, so enjoy the bouncing. I think it's incredibly silly and pretty funny. You lose time by doing it, but I figure this can be a nice silly thing to just sort of have fun with the game. Anyway, uh, the prologue of this game essentially wants you to kind of explore and talk to everyone and everything. So the way we're going to start is we're going to talk to every major thing in this room, which is going to consist of the demon idol, which you see me running to right now. Uh, we're going to talk to Beth here in a moment, who's bouncing. We'll be talking to the mask, we'll be talking to the guy on the left, and we'll be talking to the computer. Uh, the items you have to talk to once, the characters you have to talk to twice. Uh, the way you can tell is, you know, if it disappears, you talk to them. They'll reopen, they'll disappear. That's how I know I talk to them. And my night's going good, Luffy. Hope you're doing good today. So one more dialogue with her should be good. How does Buyo Buyo lose you time? Because otherwise you wouldn't have to go into the menu to do the setting. Actually, I think I did talk with her twice. I could be wrong. I just want to saw it reopen. Alright. So we talked to the mask, and we're going to talk to this guy twice. I'm not sure why they make you talk to the people twice. I'm assuming it's probably just so you, you know, when you play uh, the hub worlds of the game, you're going to know, like, hey, you should be talking to these people. Uh, that's going to help you out quite a lot. You'll be able to be able to figure out what to do. And then the awkward one back here is the computer. So talking about Clock Tower as a game, it plays as a point and click. Uh, so you're on a PlayStation 1 controller, although apparently you can use the PlayStation 1 mouse. That's an option. I didn't know that was an actual thing for a while. But that is actually an option. No, no, Buyo doesn't make the game longer. It just turning on the setting loses you more time than not having to turn on the setting. But yes, this is kind of just the gist of uh, starting the game. Alright, and now that i talked to everyone like I mentioned, I'm able to leave the room. So here's actually the most important part of the run in uh, Barden section. We're going to be talking to this guy right here, this bouncing fellow named Harris. If you talk to Harris once, you can go to the elevator and play as Helen. If you talk to him twice, you get to play as Jennifer, which is one of the major differences. And no, this game doesn't have a lot of major um, like movement tech or skips. It's mainly precision on movement and knowing where to go and when to go. And also making sure that you aren't dilly-dallying because then the scissor man will show up and he can throw a big monkey wrench into your plans. Also, another thing I want to mention. You may notice that I'm walking and running. This is the biggest factor of the run and will be the biggest time save. The intro is a lot of dialogue mashing, so keep that in mind. However, the biggest part about this run is the fact that you can mess up running very easily. Um, by pushing circle, which is the button that kind of activates things, you can walk towards something. 
or you can talk to something. It's your action button. Pushing it twice allows you to run. Mashing it will kind of give you this weird running walking. So ideally, what you want to be doing is in every single room, you need to optimize the maximum amount of runtime possible. A lot of people, when they learn this game or try doing this game, they don't know how to do that because um, they're used to just, oh, hey, if I just hold down the run button or I mash this button, I will move. This game does not like that for some reason. It's only exclusive to this one. So if you try mashing it, you just get this awkward, like, walk, run, walk, run. So it's not very good. Anyway, this is a long reporting section here. We're going to be talking to these guys while they're bouncing. It's all the fun bouncing, isn't it? We all love the bouncing. Are there any differences between the two? The two what? Also, I should mention as well, I'm playing this on a Japanese PlayStation 2. Um, PlayStation 2s are usually the ideal way of playing PS1 games, either that or PlayStation TV. Uh, for Clock Tower, PlayStation 2 is going to allow us to use fastest speed and is currently the known fastest way of running this game. Also, yeah, they're entirely different routes and char uh, characters. They play fundamentally the same, but you do different things with them. And the story will change based on who you pick. They're actually different enough where, like, they're different categories. So we're doing Jennifer 100%, because Jennifer, I'm pretty sure, is the canon one. And also, people like Jennifer more. Helen's fun, but we'll be doing that one later. This is Nolan and, uh, I think Tim. Tim is a cameraman. Look at his pink shirt, his vest, and his jeans. Peak 90s apparel, and a tiny Kodak camera, and the backwards ball cap. Sure they're the same? No, they're different. They're entirely different routes. They don't do the same things. Difficulty-wise, are the same. Helen's probably harder. It's longer, too. Jennifer's is arguably easier. Between the two characters, Jennifer is probably the easier one. Which is why more people gravitate towards Jennifer. Jennifer's is also faster by, like, two minutes. At the moment, anyway. Helen's is definitely the harder route. Although, most people don't actually unlock Jennifer, weirdly enough. When people play this game casually, they usually unlock Helen. If you're wondering why, normally people don't talk to characters, like, more than once. So, they might not realize you can talk to Harris again, or they don't want to talk to Harris again. In doing so, oh, sorry. In doing so, you end up missing that dialogue, so it's very important to have. By the way, this game is kind of weird in the fact that, uh, the story beats are mainly, like, this game is mainly endgamed, I should say. Also, here's the example of running. And also, I'll keep doing this throughout the hallway, because, um, he'll kind of stop with where I'm moving him. So I gotta make sure that, like, I'm not only double-tapping the once, I'm doing it more than once. I'm doing it every, every time. This is a weird one right here. We have to talk to Harris, and then you talk to the demon idol. Uh, in doing so, we're gonna be able to get the prompt that we need, but talking to one and then the other doesn't work. I really wish it did, because we're talking to Harris anyway. But talking to the demon idol second allows us to get the prompt we need. So this is a prompt that'll come in handy later for this game. For a lot of people who don't know this, uh, this is a major decision right at the beginning of the game. You are sending the demon idol out for research, and you're expected to remember this. Thank you for the tier one, by the way, Lofi. It is much appreciated. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and welcome to the swarm. We're picking yes here. So this question is, should we show the demon idol to the old man? The old man is going to be a scenario in chapter two. In chapter two, you can either go to the library or the old man's house. In every single scenario, the old man will be faster, because it's just a shorter level by far, and there's much less to do there. Uh, the library takes longer, it's slower, so we don't want to go to the library. Uh, funny enough, though, uh, if you don't realize this, um, if you pick the library, or if you pick the old man's house and you go to the other location, the demon idol won't spawn there, meaning you're locked out of the best ending and you'll get the worst ending in the game, which is ending E. They're bouncing on that because it's called Buyo Buyo mode. It is a Japanese exclusive mode that allows people to bounce. Anyway, we're about to get into the overarching thing of the game. This has mostly been the prologue, the tutorial. It's about like a 10 minute intro. Not too bad of an intro in all honesty. It's pretty short. And it's mainly to teach you about the game. There's no consequences. You don't need to worry. So it's quite nice. Japanese horror games and arbitrary triggers. Name an art better duo. Well, I mean, especially in this game where it's a point and click, it makes a lot of sense. And getting the order of these triggers is very important. If you're wondering which one do I think is the cooler speed one, by the way, I think Helen's route's slightly better because I think there's more to do in Helen's route and you see a lot more of the game. Meanwhile, in Jennifer's route, you'll kind of see one of the funnier parts. And also, we're going to be hitting the next area of the game. We'll, we'll be kind of having the overarching overworld. Also, I'm saving time, but I could definitely be going faster here. So, that's at least better right now. Alright, now we play as Jennifer. See? We're Jennifer now. 
So the order doesn't really, it kind of matters, uh, but the way we're going to be doing it is we're going to be starting off at the hotel. Uh, this is the hub world that you kind of have to go around, you'll go through all the locations, and you'll find out information about the what's happening and what's going on with everyone. You'll meet people, and story-wise, let's talk about this. This is Edward. Uh, this is, uh, I think, Kay. She survived, or Edward is the other survivor of the clock tower murders that happened a year prior to this game. This game takes place after the original clock tower about a year later, and... I, uh, the way it works is that Jennifer is living with Helen, who is a criminal psychologist, and is studying under Barden, who is investigating the clock tower massacre, the murders. So you're kind of going undergoing therapy and also giving information to the police. One year later, the Scissor Man will be coming back, so you have to find out who done it. This game's a who done it, kind of like Scream. So the, it's kind of the big twist, and it's kind of funny in that way. Also, I like Buyo Buyo more, mode more than Giraffe mode, and it is happy, Loki. I agree, it's very happy. What we need to do is we need to talk to everyone to make sure that we can kind of get the later events happening. Um, and the three locations we're going to are first the hotel, and then the school, and then we'll be going to uh, Jennifer's house. Or her room. In that order, we'll be able to kind of get everything that we need to get. So it's quite nice. Like, for instance, you could tell go to the school first and then the hotel, I think. But the main thing is you need to do both of those before you can actually get to back to your house. Because no one won't spawn there until you've done the other two things. It's actually a cool mechanic on the overworld because you have to go to like all these different locations and then you'll be able to talk to more people, you'll get some optional dialogue, and then you'll kind of be able to learn more about the story and what's going on. For us though, it's just people bouncing. They're bouncing. So it's pretty fun. Also, should we mention that Helen is your essential, like, your mom. All right, here's Nolan. Let's see if I got the costumes. If I didn't, I'll do the next run, because I hope I did. We'll learn once we uh, get to the end of chapter, like, once we get to chapter one's gameplay. This is why I don't know if I got it yet. Like, it doesn't show you the costumes until you get to the actual game, oddly enough. Costumes? Yeah, this game has alternate costumes. I hopefully turned them on. I, I think I did. You don't know it, though, until you get to the actual university chapter, though. Anyway, Nolan's goal here is he snuck into your house to ask you on a date and to uh, interview you. And since he's awkward and stuff, uh, he's going to say, yes, both, an interview and a date. And then you being, I guess, dumb, except because, you know. Nolan's a weird dude, let's just put it that way. Alright. Now begins chapter one. Jennifer Simpson. Let's see, did I get the costume? I don't think I like this weird. I didn't get the costume. Okay, I messed up. I think I'm plugging a second controller. Also, they spelled Scandinavia wrong up there. Damn. I can't believe they spelled Scandinavia wrong. Scandinavia, see? There's Scandinavia. Living. By the way, this game takes place in Norway, if you don't know this. This is a Norwegian lore game based on Japanese, like, horror... Made by Japanese devs, but it takes place in Norway and is inspired by Italian media. Anyway, now we kind of get to the actual crux of the game. So we're finally going to have our first death. Famous movies in this one? I mean, they might exist. Definitely, if you're really wondering, this uh, this game shares a common thing with the, uh, the movie, but... Yeah. No, I didn't get the costume after I, uh, I had the wrong setting. I think need to plug in two controllers, but we'll see. Either way, here's all the bouncing and the scissor man. So we're wondering, how are we going to avoid the scissor man? We're going to duck into this room. So the scissor man will kill you if he gets in contact with you. You can try to evade him, but it's actually very difficult. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run over to this box. Uh, this box will allow us to hide, and Jennifer is the master of hiding, as you can see her bouncing within the box. I'm pretty sure the scissor man won't be able to find us in here, right? Clearly not. She won't be able to, uh, the scissor man won't be able to find us in this box, so we're nice and safe. And now, in old clock tower fashion, uh, we're going to have to get an item from this shelf. Uh, that item is actually going to help us out later. I click on that box, and then I just click on the door. Uh, by doing that, I get a quick run out, and it's very nice. If you don't grab this item, you will actually not be able to get the best ending in the final chapter of the game. So now, we're going to click on these. Come on. Good job, Jennifer. We're going to the elevator, roughly, because this room will have the next key we need. She's going pretty slow, but this is fun. So, Jennifer's chapter is actually really quick. All you need to do is escape. 
And in order to do so, we need the oil can, and then we're going to need this table. Also, this man's just bouncing with his head, not following him. He's perfectly fine. Don't worry about him. He's cool. He's doing his best, as you can see there, right? All right, there we go. If you talk to this guy, uh, the scissor man will pop out and jump scare you, so you don't want to do that. All right, and now we can leave. So, this entire chapter revolves around getting this key. That's all you have to do. Jennifer's chapter is actually really, really fast. Thank you, Defend Go. So, the way the stairs work is I'm going to just double tap on the top floor every time. Uh, in doing so, I'll be able to continue running. And it's actually a bit more finesse-based than it looks, weirdly enough. And there we go. And the chapter is done. See? Chapter 1 is very, very quick, as you can see. And now begins our favorite part. Bouncing. I love the way she bounces on a ladder. This is why Helen's is a bit longer. You have to do chapter one. On uh, Jennifer's, you just leave. By the way, have I mentioned that Jennifer is an expert ladder climber? Look at the way she goes on these ladders. She absolutely knows the way ladders work. She is very quick on them. Exactly, that's how you climb down ladders. I lost a bit of time there, that's okay. Anyway, back to the main game. So we survived, and we need to go tell the police and, or, you know, your mom. It wasn't a fever dream? No, it was not a fever dream. She does speed run ladders. So, now begins chapter two, and this is one of the big chapters where people can mess up on. Uh, you need to make sure that you talk to... Helen and then Nolan. We're going to want Nolan to go to the old man's house so we can get what we need. If you pick Helen, you'll go to the library, and then one, it takes too long, and then two, you're not going to be able to have the demon idol for later because we put it in the old man's house. The old man's house is very quick in comparison. Uh, you actually, on Jennifer's route, it's even faster. And then the character you play as in uh, Scenario 2 will actually change. Clock Tower has a total of five playable characters. Barden... Helen, Gotts, Nolan, and Jennifer. So first things first, though, we actually do need to talk to Helen. If you don't talk to Helen, you won't be able to talk to Nolan for some reason. I think it's to give you the knowledge that she might go to the library and give you, like, the choice, and then you get a pick at that point. You do have the gold scissors, Dark Angel. You do. So it's imperative that you end up talking to Helen first. I think this game is more of a joyful treat than, a, like, an amazing speedrun. Like, it's fun. It's definitely a fun one, but it's very joyful is the cool thing about it. It is a very joyful game, and that's kind of how I enjoy this. I, I wouldn't be grinding this eight hours a day, like, straight up, I don't think. But I can definitely enjoy my time with it, you know? My goal, ideally, is probably to get, like, a one hour or something. But we'll need to see. At least I think we need to talk to Helen. I'm pretty sure we have to talk to Helen. Ooh, my neck. Ooh. Good cracks. My neck cracks a lot. And so I like... Poof. I just love the way they're in sync. I don't know why some characters are in sync with the bouncing and others aren't. But that is the case. By the way, to unlock Buyo Buyo mode, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but I'll mention it again. You need to get every single ending with every character. So all two of them. Uh, th there are five endings per character. If you're wondering, how do I end up doing that? I save scum it, so I save before I get the ending. It still took me, like, many hours to do. Mainly because, like, the credits in this game are incredibly long and unskippable. So, very often, whenever I beat one ending, it's like, well, now for me to stand up and get a drink, because the ending is ending. And we're all good to go at that point. Alright, so the main tech here right now is to click on Nolan's butt. By doing so, we'll be on yes, and it'll be much faster. If you're on Jennifer's side, one, you'll be able to talk to Nolan, and then two, that's where the no option is. You don't want to click no, you want to click yes, because it sends Nolan to the old man's house. The old man's one of my favorite characters, by the way. I sure hope nothing bad happens to him. We'll meet him soon, though. Don't worry, he's a great guy. Also, I'll have some fun facts for horror fans. Yeah, for right now, though, it's a lot of dialogue, which is why you can see why we put this in Japanese. Why are they stretching? They're bouncing, Naoda. They're bouncing. There we go. Yes. That's why I end up clicking on Nolan. You can just... Yes. 
which is much faster than going all the way to the other and going new. No. We go yes. All right, good stuff. So here begins chapter two, we're at the old man's house. So the plot of this one is that you're gonna to have to escape the deadly house, but there's two things trying to kill you, the scissor man and then a surprise guest, which is going to be an adorable doggy. Also, this is how I chill on my couch all the time, just bouncing in and out of it. Whenever I have guests over, I just put them on the couch facing away from me and just start bouncing. It's the right move, right? By the way, this old guy right here is voiced by Barry Burden. If you like Barry Burden from Resident Evil, he's bouncing. And he's in Clock Tower. Also, I sure hope nothing bad happens to this old guy. He's going to tell us how there's another uh, Clock Tower mansion and we need to go to that one to stop the Scissor Man. So, that's kind of also one of the reasons you want to talk to this guy. This is really fast in comparison. Yeah, it's... Well enough, this game came out the same year as the original Resident Evil. So technically this I don't think I don't think this came out before Resident Evil though. I know the original Clock Tower did, but I think this came out like tangently. Let's see, Clock Tower release. Dates. Hold on. When did this game come out? I think this game came out in ninety six. December. Oh, yeah, never mind. This came out after Resident Evil, shortly after. But the original Clock Tower came out a year before Resident Evil. I don't think Clock Tower is the OG. Technically. Technically, it's the OG. Technically. But the reason why this game didn't really get much popularity was because the game came out in Japan. And only Japan. Train over tier one for two months. Enjoy the emotes and decisions. Thank you very much. By the way, if it wasn't obvious at this point, all you have to do is talk to the old man for a little bit here. And then once you finish your dialogue with the old guy, you get to begin the game, and then we'll be back to what we need to do. Most of the gameplay in this game is endgame, oddly enough, but it's fun to watch them pounce. Also, my, this is my favorite moment in the entire game. Just, look, a chandelier! Look how long he looks at it. I hope nothing bad happens to the old man Rick. I sure hope nothing bad happens to old man Rick. I sure hope nothing bad happens to him. Oh no! Something bad happened to him. He died. Who would have guessed? Also, he's still bouncing. So he's not actually dead. He's faking it. He's still bouncing. That's how you know he's alive. I just love how dramatic it is too. Okay, now I get to begin the actual gameplay portion of this level, which is actually really fun. So, the goal is we need to find a demon idol, some soap, and a map. Uh, we're going to start by going to this back corner here. and doing so, we're going to go up here next. Uh, going up to the second floor is our prerogative. The reason why is because the demon idol is on the second floor. So, we're going to have to go up here eventually anyway. There are two ways to avoid the scissor man. The slow way and the fast way. We're going to do the fast way. The, sl the slow way is by using a blankie. Blankies are not fast. You know what's fast? The closet. We're going to hide in the closet. Now we're gonna hide in the closet, and we're gonna get some extra stealth. What's gonna happen is no one's gonna peer on out, so we can see that the scissor man is gone. There's a blanket on this bed, and by using the blanket, you disable the scissor man, but the problem is you exit the room. By staying in the closet, no one won't leave the room when he's done. So, we need to go into this closet like three times. This is why going to this room in this closet is ideal. You save a lot of time by not having to go through extra doors. In Nolan's route, the demon idol is going to be in this closet. The demon idol is always in this closet in Nolan's route. Uh, you're going to be able to find it here. However, you need to talk to it twice. First, he'll like, go like, oh, hey, there's a demon idol. And then you do it again. It's like, there it is. See, it's floating. And then we can go on down to the first floor once again. This chapter is incredibly quick now that we know what we're doing. So now we got the demon idol. We're going to be going downstairs. See? You can go to this room for some fun cartoon action, but we're not going to go there right now. Uh, mainly because it loses time and can actually kill a run, potentially, if you're not careful. There's a minor RNG in this run as well where the Scissor Man can spawn, and then if that does happen, it's pretty unlucky. But the way to avoid it is you would essentially just... Uh... Oh, can you run? Thank you. You would have to just know where to hide. There's actually a lot more spots to hide than you would think. 
All right. So we're gonna go into this room. This is the laundry room. We're gonna get soap here. Thank you, effect. And then with the soap, we're gonna be able to escape from the mean old dog. It's very important we have the soap. If you don't have the soap, you literally die. If you, if you didn't grab the demon owl, by the way, or you just forgot it was here, you get the bad ending, which is how you actually get it in a faster way. Well, no, I mean, he was living under his final moments. In his dying moments, he continued to bounce. Now he is no longer bouncing. There we go. So the last thing we need is in the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is going to have the map. Weirdly enough, uh, Helen's route's actually faster for this level. Uh, in, like, Jennifer's, you have a lot to do. In Helen's, it just, well, everything's in one room. See? Okay, mini boss fight now. The way this is going to work is you just talk to the soda can here. Alright, then once you talk to the soda can, you just mash on the mask. He's dead. The Dorito demon is now dead. I call him the Dorito demon because he's just standing in the kitchen... Getting angry that you took food. Well, actually, we took a map to find the mansion, but same principle. All right. And now we can leave. So the whole reason we need the soap is because if you go outside, uh, this is explored more in Helen's route, but an angry dog will kill you. We don't want to die to angry dog. That's bad. Why well, as you don't talk to the soda can, you literally can't leave because you don't know where the mansion is. Oh, you mean? Oh, no, the soda can. If you don't talk to the soda can, you die because the mask will kill you with chairs. We did it. It is bouncy mode, yes. Alright, so now time for the finale. The way this is going to work is we're going to start by going, going to Nolan. Uh, what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to know that, hey, Nolan found out where everything is and we need to go to the scissor man to stop him. What's the concept behind a clock tower type game? What, what, what do you mean? Like this game or general clock tower inspired games? Clock tower type game is inspired by the original clock tower games, meaning they're cat and mouse. I mean, usually meaning stalkers and trying to avoid the stalkers and generally not having means to fight back. Clock tower was an interesting game because it really didn't give you a way to fight back traditional means. You had an ever relenting pursuer that you would always chase you and you'd never be able to do anything about. It was kind of like Nemesis before Nemesis happened. Even then you can still fight Nemesis. In this game, you can never kill the Scissor Man until the very end. Like, he'll always be a threat. So, weirdly enough, Alien Isolation would be a Clock Tower-esque game. It's a ever, you know, relentless pursuer that you mostly can't get rid of, barring minor things, and that you need to play cat and mouse with. Anyway, though, we start with Nolan because he doesn't give us the information about both the Demon Idol and the map. Now, the order here doesn't really matter too much. We start with the police because, well, it'll be nice and convenient to go right to left to right. Good job. How's everyone? I'm doing alright. So, I'm not even kidding, but since this game's a whodunit, a who's the scissor man, in order to make the game happen, you need to talk to every single character in the game. Everyone's bouncy, because this is Buyo Buyo mode, Crabella. It's bounce mode. It's exclusive to the Japanese version, and is a native option. It's actually in the game. This is not a mod. This is genuinely in the game. This is a additional option that you can have. Exactly, it's a trampoline conference. It just makes sense that way. It is a good game decision. I think so, anyway. Amnesia and Soma. Amnesia and Soma are a little bit different. Those are a little more like walking sims. But even then, you still have stuff to do. Come on. But yeah, so this game's a whodunit, and the general plot is that someone's the scissor man, and you don't know who it is. There's a scissor man who came back a year later. You gotta figure out who it is. And in order to have the whodunit still happen, because you're going to England, every character in the game is going to join you going to England. So we need to invite every character in the game. Now, would the smarter decision be not to? Correct. But still. Well, again, weirdly enough, this is, again, only exclusive to the Japanese version. It's not like this is in the, uh, the American version. If you buy the American version, you can't unlock this. You can only have this by in the Japanese version, which makes it more fun. And the dialogue really doesn't matter much in this game, because, you know... We're skipping it all anyway. It's not audio. It's not audible. Also, really enough, when it is audible, it's still in English anyway, so you can still hear it. But with fast disk speed, it kind of messes with it. It makes it go really fast. So it's kind of funny. Well, I see man's face was like most suspect. 
it, you know it's a mask, right? Which is the mask we explore in the beginning of the game. It's a mask. It's a costume. Someone's wearing the costume and running around. So the twist is, who is masquerading as the Scissor Man trying to kill everyone? We don't know. It could be anyone. It could be you. It could even be me. It could even be Twitch chat. Is it you, Twitch chat? Are you the Scissor Man? Think it's a person? It might be. It's probably chat. I think it is chat. And here's the last three people. It's called Buyo Buyo Mode, comrade. How did I know? I knew the whole time. It could be you. Is chat the scissor man? I think chat is the scissor man. All right, and now we go back to the new reporters. I do need a Buyo Buyo command. Okay. So yeah, that order is very particular. I just go left to right, do a clean sweep. It's much uh, more easy to remember that way or where you've been. And then once you go to the final one, you just go over to the uh, press office again and talk to Nolan and Helen. And then we're all good to go. Uh, and then we'll be begin the final chapter. Most of the gameplay is the final chapter. It's actually really fun from that point onward. It's fun, you know, previously, but it's not just dialogue mashing and watching people bounce. Don't be wrong, though. I love to watch you all bounce. It's pretty fun. Exactly, comrade. The jiggle physics always happen in Clock Tower. You know, you got me there. That is conclusive proof that you're the Scissor Man. Anyway, don't you worry. We'll figure out who the Scissor Man is soon. Also, like I mentioned, there are massive differences between Helen and Jennifer. Helen's route, you just enter the castle. Jennifer's route, you start a little bit different. Just a little bit different. Hey, Katrina, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. So watch. We're going to learn that everyone disappeared. Uh, everyone's lost. How did I lose time on mashing dialogue? I don't know. Somehow. All right. It's the Scissor Man. Who could it be? Who's the Scissor Man? It's another Scissor Man, as you can see behind his mask. He took off his mask to reveal another mask. And then he took off that costume to reveal it's Harris. Damn, I can't believe it. Harris died in front of us, but he's still bouncing. How did that happen? Tell the costume? I like how he ripped out his mask. Just, uh, have another one. Alright, Harris is dead. There's actually two Scissor Men. So, chat. It's cool. This game has a big plot twist. There's two Scissor Men. Not just one Scissor Man. There's two Scissor People, in fact. More than a man. It wasn't Harris. It was Harris. But it was also a du it's double the Scissor Man. Double the scissors. He's the decoy Scissor Man. Scissor Man hired another Scissor Man to help him. The real Scissor Man is still among us. He's the imposter. Ha 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 ha. I this joke in 2021. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Alright, so we're doing 100%. Uh, what that means is we save every single person in the game. It's actually very important. There are seven people who matter. The rest of them will either die or they don't matter. We're saving seven people. First things first, we need to get the key. The key is very important. If we don't grab this key, uh, we'll end up killing a guy. So you have to be very careful not to kill anybody. You can see the key right there. This key will let me out of this kind of dungeon-esque area. All right, this is the library. The library is going to have a door spell. Uh, this will come in handy later. Yes, it's best ending. Weirdly enough though, this is kind of where it gets a bit weird. When 100% or best ending is actually faster than doing the main, like, any percent. Dude, we're getting a lot of weird spammers posting, like, weird links. I don't know why. There's been a lot of phishing attempts today. I'm glad Nightbot's taking care of that. RNG time. Yes, people can die. We got Moon. Moon is actually the best RNG, so we got really lucky right now. Uh, you don't need that plate. You just need to know what was on it. So if you know Moon is on there, uh, we're good. You can see the big Moon. Moon is also the easiest to see. It's the first one. is the best. It's called Buyo Buyo Mo Dra Dragoon Shadow. They're bouncing. So it's quite nice. So what I like to do is I like to pick up this candle. 
And funny enough, a lot of people think that you need to actually help this guy out. You don't need to help him out. Seeing that he is alive means he is alive. Otherwise, uh, you don't need to worry. So, this is one person already saved. If you enter a room and someone's alive, they're officially alive, and that is quite nice. I am, Ellis Ackle. I am. So now we can escape this area, and we'll be good to go. There's one person alive. Exactly, Teddy. Follow the link for shady emotes. And now we're actually in the game. So, the difference between Helen and Jennifer's routes is, one, the starting position and what you need to do. So, Jennifer can't read Latin because she's 15 and also not a, not a nerd. So, she can't read Latin. You know, just the, the cause of being a 15-year-old girl and not being able to read Latin. That's how it goes, you know? Yep. Some of the people we will actually talk to. We don't need to talk to everyone, but some of them we do need to talk to. First things first, we're going to make our way up to this upper room because we're right next to it and it makes sense to go here as soon as possible. Run, Jennifer, please. No, don't click on the link so you'll get your information fish and you'll die. We're going to start by going to this middle table. This is going to scare a mouse. That mouse is not bouncing, by the way. He's never been alive in his life. From this point onward, we're now going to go where the mouse went. This is going to reveal a key called the library key. We do this early in Jennifer's route, because this room is right next to our starting room, meaning we don't have to go back here later. As well, when we have to go to the library, we'll have that key, so it's quite nice. Alright, there's the library key. And now we can leave the room. Like I mentioned, the order that we're doing is very important. We clicked on a table, and then we moved it so we can get a key, because the mouse revealed a key in his mouse hole. So we got a key off that one. Next, we're going to be going to the bottom left, all the way down the bottom left, this tiny room right here. This tiny room is going to be much, much nicer. First things first. We're going to door number three. Door number one doesn't have anything that we need. We don't have to worry about that one. We're going to go to the kitchen. I mentioned it earlier, but some of the characters in this game we will need to talk to. Not all the characters, but some of the characters. I like Gots. He's alive. We don't need to talk to Gots. But we're going to get our next character, uh, who is in the kitchen. Uh, this character we do need to talk to, though, because this character is going to be very important. If I don't talk to them, uh, I'm not going to be able to get a key that I need for later. Also, Clock Tower is one of those games where you're going to have to know something before you can do it. So, now that I know there's a hole in the ground, I can do this. Exactly, Angry Nick. This inspired RE8. You, you got it. And actually did. You can use her, so it's very important you go the right way. Um, namely, you can kill Barden and Gots very easily by messing up. First things first, though, we talk to the ladder to immediately get the scream in the back corner. Uh, this little jump scare gives you... <gasps> Beth. She's scary. Beth. So we need to talk to Beth for two reasons. One, you don't know she's back here unless you talk to her. Two, uh, she has a key that we need. We desperately need this key. It's very important to have it. Otherwise, if she dies, you'll have to find it through other means. So by talking to Beth, we fulfill the requirement of our second person saved. And as well, we're going to have a key. So we're going to be talking to her one more time for the key. This key is actually really important too, because I think this gives us the... Uh, I want to say either the gate key or the library key. I think it's the gate key that this gives us. And there's going to be an upcoming gate that's going to be blocking me off. As well, I mentioned, if you're paying attention to the beginning of this run, also how are you doing, snoozing duck? I grabbed an oil can. It's still with me. The oil can is going to be incredibly useful for me because you can't actually get the best ending without it. This is one of those games where if you messed up in Chapter 1, the rest of the game will also be screwed. So, you know, don't mess up. Also, the ladder climbing is back. Good job, Jennifer. Good movement. Alright, now we're going to save Barden. He is next. This clock tower has mild RNG where Scissor Man can spawn, but it's not nearly as bad as SNES. This game's actually really straightforward. There we go. Oh my gosh, she's not running. I need her to start running more. Alright, maybe I'm doing alright. Okay, we're going to be going to this door. We're going to see Barden. He's going to be alive. See? Barden's alive. Now we leave. That's all you had to do. I think if you also take too long, Barden can die, so you have to be very careful not to kill him. 
Okay, this room's actually really easy and really fast. Uh, there's a death scene if you talk to the desk. We don't need the desk, we just need this book. By talking to this book, we're good to go. It's not a safe hiding place. If we see Barden alive, he's considered alive. So we're going to just talk to Barden really quick, and it'll be quite nice. All right. Now that we got the book, we can get the oil can. And like I mentioned, we just win. I mean, this can kill you, but it doesn't need to kill you. Like, it, you don't need to do it with Jennifer is the main thing. Okay, so this back room is now really important. This is why we got the oil can. See? Oil. It allows you to remove the lock on the door. Uh, this room is locked for a couple of reasons. I also got the candle earlier, so that's good. First things first, we need to talk to the sarcophagi. Sarcophagus? Sarcophagi? Whatever you want to call it. There's a scissor man, but it's a mummified scissor man. He has a key. This key is going to lock that chest in the corner. That chest is very important. You can see we got that there. Next, we're going to be grabbing this rope. Uh, the rope is going to be good for a puzzle coming up. This puzzle can end up killing you if you're not careful. This is why, if you try talking to the chest, bats come in. What's the story of the mummy? It's a mummified scissor man, that's it. It's just a scissor man. It's a mummified scissor man. I just explained it. That's the whole story. It's just a mummified scissor man. Alright, and then we have... Helen. See? There she is. She's bouncing. So earlier I grabbed this thing called the door spell. The door spell is going to be uh, used on either Helen or Barden. Uh, it's faster on Helen because Helen has shorter dialogue. So by talking to Helen, uh, we can end up getting a much faster translation on this door spell. The door spell is entirely mandatory. If you don't do this, you can't get the best ending. It is entirely mandatory to have both Helen alive and the door spell. Even if you don't want to save everyone, you have to have Helen. Exactly, the chest. She's treasure. We treasure Helen here. Okay, so the slight RNG that can happen right now. If Scissor Man spawns early, uh, we get good RNG. If he does not spawn early, it's, it's not good. Correct, Helen dies if you don't bring oil because she'll die in this chest. If you lock a human being in a treasure chest where they can't get out, they're going to eventually die. That is uh, the way that that goes, yes. I do not think most of us survive in a treasure chest for that long. Okay, so if this man spawns, it's good. We actually want him to spawn. We're not going to test it out. Okay. No music. That's fine. So, Scissor Man didn't spawn. That's okay. We're going to summon him on this door right here. If he spawns early, you can skip talking to the door in this little jump scare, but we didn't spawn early. Oh no! How scary! The Scissor Man! Don't worry, we immediately avoid him. It's much faster to immediately avoid him. The thing is, though, you won't know to go in here unless the Scissor Man is chasing you. So, that's why it's a bit faster to have the Scissor Man on your tail. And now we have Nolan. Nolan's important. We have to talk to Nolan. Nolan, you're safe. Nolan, you just have to talk to because that'll mean that means he'll help you later. What happened to your leg? It's just scratch. I'll be okay with regular one. It is nice, Grogify. He can't. He has scissors. Have you ever tried breaking into a house with scissors? It's impossible. I mean, I haven't, but someone probably has. I'm going, Nolan. Have you wondering what is the thing that we're doing here? We need to wait for dead children to sing. That is the actual cue. Meanwhile, Nolan's just kind of tripping out in this room full of skeletons. See, there they are. I told you, dead children who sing. No, that's not how it goes. How's it going, Xable? Hope you're doing good. Open the door. So this is going to be nice for us, because this is going to allow us to have Nolan for later. He hurt his leg. What was that? Well, yeah, they're dead children. I told you, dead things don't bounce. Only living things bounce. Dead children cannot bounce. They are dead. Only living things bounce. Bouncing is essentially life force. All right. 
Now, this route also helps us, because now we're near the end of the game. What we're going to be doing? We're going to run to this door. This door is going to have the library. We opened it earlier. I mean, he wants to chill in there. It's safe. They do, stupid inbreeding. They do. I could have ran. It happens to have gone to this. Dude, there's a lot of spam links today. Holy shit. At least Nightbot's on fire. Oh, hold on. So we're going to talk to the top of this. This has genealogy. Very important. Yeah. By talking to that first, you're going to be able to get rid of uh, the requirements to um, grab it. Uh, if you try talking to the stool first, Jennifer won't know anything's up there. So you have to like, oh, I observed it. And the same thing applies to the book. It makes sense to put the book in the stair and the book in the bookcase. But if you don't look at the scratches, it won't actually work. So it's very important we have this. As you'll see here. Okay, now I hope you remember earlier from that random test I gave you. Is it book? Is it is it moon? Is it yes, it's moon. The answers are moon, star, and sun. Whatever we saw in the chapel is the answer. I know it's moon because we did it earlier. Moon is the fastest because it's also the closest and it's the easiest to see. The worst RNG is sun because it's the furthest away. Now you're wondering, what are we doing back here? What are we grabbing? We are grabbing a dagger. This is going to be the final thing we need for the finale. If you don't grab this, you cannot win. It is straight up mandatory to have this dagger. Like, this is actually one of the most important items in the game. Like, Jennifer's a lot more important items than Helen does, weirdly enough. Helen's mainly just don't fuck up. Jennifer's is like, oh, you need to grab everything. Like, everything, everything. Alright, there we go. Alright, from here on out, we only have a few more things to do. We're like this. It's called Buyo Buyo mode. It's in the title, Buyo Buyo. It means bounce. Look at her climb the ladder. She's fast. She's not running. Nah, that's fine. Hey, there we go. Oh, she does. She absolutely does. So there's actually a puzzle in this room, but Jennifer doesn't have the means of doing it yet. So we're going to have to get that means. First things first, I run to this room. I don't think there's exactly an order you have to do, but eventually we're going to have to go to that room and this room. So I think it's mostly pres uh, um, preference at this point. Because it'll really go the same way either way. This is Tim. Also, Tim is one of the last people we need to save. Tim is very important. Let's see who we've saved at this point. Nolan, Beth, Tim, Helen, Barton, Gotts. See? We saved everyone. And Jennifer. So we'll have everyone we need to save. Tim is our final person. Tim is very important. We love Tim here. No, not Timmy, Tim. There's a difference. It's Tim. Alright, there we go. How's it going, Simon? Hope you're doing good. So, the reason we talk to Tim is because he gives us matches. That's the whole reason. No other reason. Tim just gives you matches. It's very important to get those matches, though. Okay, so that paper I picked up earlier gives you a genealogy map, which will tell you, hey, there's something there. She's not growing, she's bouncing. We save the scissor man? No, we're not saving the scissor man. We're gonna kill the scissor man. He's bad. The scissor man's a bad man. Oh, I'm actually kind of curious where my time save is. This point and click? This is point and click, Volt. Wow, that was actually really good. Look at her run. All right, now that we got everything we need, we can make our way back. See? No, time stays not in the Buyo Buyo. I'm actually losing time because of Buyo Buyo. First things first, in order to learn the candle, you have to talk to this. It's one of those weird things that if you don't do it, you can't do it. So it's hard to say. The what? This game came out in 96. Whatever reference you're making probably came out after this game. Get Jennifer. Oh my god. There we go. And now we have everything we need. This is actually the finale. Uh, kind of. Not the finale finale, but, you know, this is what you need for the finale. 
So we have the map, and now we learn that there is a tunnel. That's a Luigi's Mansion reference. It's getting kind of 96. They don't work here. Mario 64 Boost Mansion has the same layout. Uh, I'm pretty sure Clock Tower came out first. Or same year, actually. Let's see. When did Mario 64 come out? Anyone have the year? So I'm kind of curious now. I could remember Mario 64 was later. Let's see. Mario 64 was at least. 96. Wow, this came out the same year, really. Jesus Christ. Yeah, same year. I didn't know they came out the same year. Okay, that's a trip. Sorry. Oh, wow. They're tangent mansion releases. That's neat. Yeah, same year. Although, tell me Clock Tower came out first because the, uh, the Japanese one came out for Mario. Or 64, at least. So... Yeah, they're different. Alright, time for the finale. We're gonna climb this ladder. We saved everyone. Now, but you're wondering, who's the Scissor Man? Good question. Good question. It's these wild ladder climbs. That's the Scissor Man. The wild ladder climb. God, look at the way she climbs this ladder. See, it's great. Harris again? Harris came back to life. I'm glad Harris came back to life. Alright, if you haven't figured it out at this point, we've saved everybody except for two people. Kay and Edward. The scissor man is actually Edward. He moves really well. I want to check. I think I might be missing a room or something. I might be doing some extra. There it is. The Scissor Man. It's Edward. And also, Kay is dead. Oh no, not Kay. Also, World Record doesn't use Buyo Buyo, admittedly, so there's that too. <laughs> so anyway, the finale is actually a lot to do at once. Uh, you have to just kind of keep it in mind, but it's actually pretty easy. Use the Demon Idol first, have it equipped. Then we'll be using the dagger. We don't actually use the door spell, that happened automatically. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to talk to this. Uh, it's the hole in the wall. That's why you need the demon out the whole time. In doing so, then we get out the dagger. Uh, she'll read the spell automatically and the door will open. What happens next is you just mash the button. At this point, as long as you know to use the dagger, you win. A lot of people don't actually realize that you can use the dagger in the finale. And then they die and then they do, oh, what happened? You died because you didn't use the dagger and you died. That's just the way it goes. Russell record for largest in the world. I don't know, man. Five. Time ends once the dagger is gone. Good time. Alright. And that was Clock Tower. PS1. Jennifer 100%. We'll have it verified by the end of the credits, but we saved all the people in the game. We got the best ending. And we have lived and stopped the Scissor Man. He got sent to a portal to hell. The best part about this game, though, is all the bouncing. And then you get your non-bouncing final cutscene. I hope you enjoyed it so far. I like this one. It was pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. This game's really easy to learn. All you gotta do is know where to go, really. Although, apparently, I might be missing part of the route. I don't think it's all my, my just moving wrong. I don't think it is, at least. I wonder Let's see. How many days we've been trapped down here. What was my times again? I got a 9.13. Alright, I probably saved time not doing Buyo Buyo. Okay. It's like a minute 16 ahead, that makes sense. I guess our number's up, Jennifer. Alright. Don't talk like that, no. Tell it mostly. GG. Alright, he leaves like 3.28 on the intro. I think it runs, like, every room you can, though, in all fairness. Like, a lot of it's kind of my like, actual movement. All right, chapter one's only good. Chapter two is the one I'm wondering about now. Let's scrub through this. With all chase scenes from Super Famicom? I mean, it's a spin on that. Jennifer, this is the sequel, yeah. This is, like, the direct sequel to that game. Helen. The only thing I'm wondering about, though, is I'm doing possibly Nolan's chapter wrong a little bit. I don't think I am. Yeah, I'm hiding right, I'm doing the right stuff there. We have long credits, by the way, so I have some time to check this out. But I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, I'm going to try doing an actual world record attempt, and then we'll go to Helen. 
I could take a pee during this. I think a lot of it's also just knowing where to move after every room. Like, that could be it. Alright, yeah, start on Nolan, and then we go... Let's see. So my routing's A-OK -okay on the, uh, the other parts of the list. Alright, let me just check out this last stuff, because I think the mansion I'm losing a bit of time that I'm not aware about. Okay, he doesn't pick up the candle during Gots. He picks it up during the Nolan room. Hmm. Alright, talk to Kay, or talk to Beth. Hey, I think these are cool. Oh, I know I'm losing time. I know I'm losing time. Wait, no, I, no, I'm not losing time there. Never mind. I thought I was. Never mind, I'm doing it right. Yeah, I think it's just good movement, in all honesty. I think it's just straight up good movement. World Record's a 5124. Either way, though, this has been Marathon Commentary for this game. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it's been good stuff. I want to get better at this game, and I think it's mostly just knowing how to run. Also, he gets the good RNG, so that's good. There's Nolan... Yeah. Well, like I know for I know for a fact on my end I don't do that one. Did the mask possess him? No, he's the he's the the brother of Bobby Barros, and in the original game he's the brother of Scissor Man. Yeah, I'm doing everything in the right order and everything. I think it's just straight up movement that I'm messing up on. Although I think Helen I can get world record in. I think I can actually get, yeah yep. That's why I tell people all the time. People think I'm kidding about it. Also, hold on. He gets to the finale at a 49. So if I get to the finale at like a 49-40 on the final door, we can have a chance. Middle checks. 15, 28. 15, 28, 25, 33. Yeah, 30 seconds are here. So Barton's most of my time lost, I think. And then, uh... Hold on, I said, what, 20... 25.30. Yeah, most of my time it seems to be in the intro. Like, the first two. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna let it play out until it comes up. I gotta pee really quick, so I'm gonna be right back. I'll be quick, and then we'll hop into the next one. Also, I wanna turn off the heater. Be right back. And yes, it's a demon baby. Demon meat baby. Yes, the way I could explain the giant meat baby turning into a young lad, I always say he's the twin brother of Bobby Barros, and no one ever believes me when I say it. 
What happened is Dan Barros, the younger, uh, the you know, the twin brother, was wearing an orphan meat mech. It's an orphan meat suit. It's not his skin. It's a suit. It's like a mech. He's controlling it. You see him actually come out of the mech in the um, I think other versions like Wonder Swan of the game for some fucking reason, but it happens. Anyway, there we go. We got the end. This is what we needed. Ending rank A. Seven survivors. So this is what I wanted to wait during the credits. So, if, uh, I hope this helped you beat Clock Tower. This works on every version of the game. It's the same principle. Uh, the only difference is in the North American version, you can't bounce. So, if you don't want to bounce, you don't need to. By the way, second place off of this run. Alright, let's try doing one run without bouncing.